Keith McGowan here, the Outboard Dad, here to help you have a better boating experience. Today we're going to continue on with our rebuild of our Mercury 150, getting in deep into doing boring honing the cylinders. There's going to be a lot of opinions as I go through this out there with guys, you can't do that, you'll never get it straight, I don't care how you're doing it. That's fine, I, I love the comments, positive or negative, works both ways for me. Uh, because someone always teaches me something new, no matter how long I've been doing this for. So please like, subscribe, and if you subscribe before October 13th, you'll get a copy, $20 value, of my used outboard motor buying guide. Any feedback you can give me when you read through this, because there's a lot of people that are technical out there who know more than me or have learned things that I haven't learned yet, but get a free copy of this if you subscribe to my channel. So we're going to continue on today with this. I already started boring the other side. If you remember, if you've watched the previous videos when we did the evaluation and pulled the heads, the worst one was this port side cylinder middle, right? So I've only got it out about five thousandths and it's starting to clean up and it was even the worst one. So we're going to continue on and get the rest of it out of there, but it looks like we're going to do 15 over on this and we're going to start ordering pistons. Now, that being said, as we're going through this process, there's a couple things we want to keep in mind. We want to make sure that we're getting the right piston wall clearance, that we're getting it straight before we do any honing or finish honing or anything like that. And if you'll notice in my videos, I'm just kind of grinding away at the cylinders. I'm trying to get them as straight as I can and, and get them round because from the start, these were out of round. They're all really close now coming within spec. I know when we do our finish hone, our 200 grit, our 100 grit, it'll round right out because I've, I've done it several times. But you'll notice I'm not going up and down with a slow speed like you see on most honing, right? I'm just grinding away at this now to get however many thousandths of an inch off of it that I need to to meet our new piston size, which we'll be ordering soon. I'm not doing that because I don't need the cross hatches right now. I just need to grind away. If you put it in a boring bar, and I did have a boring bar for many years. I had a quick way boring bar, FN boring bar, had the table, and I would bore these cylinders because once you set it up, you could do two, three, four, five, six cylinders because the machine's already set up. And yeah, you still should watch it, but you could kind of do some other things while you're keeping an eye on it because it kind of automatically comes back up. Um, and that was great. But for the cost of that machine, and doing it by hand, nine times out of 10, what I found over the years was it's only one or two cylinders that I'm rebuilding. This, of course, I'm doing all six for this video, uh, so it's taking me longer than it would be if I had the boring bar. But, you know, for the most part, I didn't really need it, and it was sitting in my shop, and I was just doing it this way because it was one or two cylinders, so I sold that piece of equipment. Um, somebody else is using it boring cylinders. I haven't had the same experience whether I use the boring bar first and then honed because you get within, you know, maybe a thousandths to a thousandths and a half before you do your finish hone and then ball hone. And then we're going to chamfer our ports. I'm going to show you how an old timer taught me how to do that with a Dremel tool with a flap disc. So the first guy that taught me how to do this had me with a little grinding stone and I would take that little grinding stone and chamfer those edges. And what I found, I had one guy return a motor after about three years, it was still running okay. And he said, look, I need to upgrade, I want more power. And I had, it was, an, it was a little uh, 90 horse Johnson and I had a 150, so he, we did a, a trade deal. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna pull this motor apart and see what it looks like inside. So everybody tells me I'm nuts, but people tell me that anyway. Uh, tore down the motor completely and I had some scoring. It still had good compression, it was 120 all around, it was even but I had some scoring right around those ports. And when I talked to my machine shop guy, I actually brought the block into him uh, over at Windsor Machine. And he said, you need to use a flap disc. You need to get away from that grinding stone because those little bits of stone are getting in there. And then he also taught me about using a plateau hone brush. I was using just a wire brush to clean out. But if you use the diamond tip plateau hone at the end, it gets the rest of those little grits out. So we're gonna continue on boring this, order up some pistons and do some more measuring. And I did, did clean off the top of these. If you remember, we checked to make sure that they were decked properly and they're within that 4,000 range in the book. So we're gonna continue on with this. So these are some things we wanna keep in mind when we're doing these projects. The other thing to keep in mind is, you'll see my bench now, 
I'm wearing a mask when I'm boring because there's a lot of dust that grit and dust you don't want to be getting that into your lungs and make sure you wear the proper mask you can look that up and do the research on your own but all of my stuff on my workbench now is going to have a nice fine layer of grit on it so you want to make sure there's nothing here uh, you can't see it in the background over here but I have some stuff covered up with some old rags while I'm doing this boring and honing um, so just keep in mind that you're going to make a mess here when you do this and then we have to clean this block thoroughly. For many years, I had my old, you know, Harbor Freight parts washer here with safety clean in it. Safety clean I've found over the years is really not good to get into your skin. Now, I do have the heavy duty rubber gloves that I would wear, but it's still, you know, you poke a hole in it, you get, it gets in there. So now over the past few years, I just get my big fat pressure washer out and I bolt this block to a chair out front and I blast the crap out of it. I find that if I take sea foam first and put it on the cylinder walls, I used to use WD-40 and it worked pretty well, but we want to avoid a flash rust, right, while we're cleaning. But we also don't want any grit to be in there. And I found with my pressure washer, I can really blast the heck out of these things. If you are concerned and you're doing this yourself, you don't have that ability, you can take it to a machine shop. They'll put it in the washing machine. I've had blocks come back. Uh, I usually set up some clean rags on the bench when I'm getting ready to do my assembly. Put it on the bench, take my brake cleaner and just spray it down, lift up my block, and I've got grit down on my rags right from the machine shop. So you'll learn different ways you can angle the pressure washer to get in all the ports. And yes, you wear safety glasses because you're going to get wet when you're doing it, but you're going to blast the heck out of this block. It's also going to help clean out some of the water jackets a little better too. And then I even then I go through with brake cleaner and spray in all the ports. I put the, the tube on the end of it and get all kinds of different angles. I don't want any grit left over in the, in the engine when I'm done. So these are the things we're gonna keep in mind as we continue on with this rebuild. So please like, subscribe, send me any comments that you have. And don't forget my used outboard my motor buying guide, free to my subscribers, a $20 value until October 13th, 2024. So we're gonna continue on with this, make more of a mess here. And then we're going to order some parts when they come in i'm going to show you how we're going to measure them and once we get our cylinders close to where we need to be how we're going to start finish honing right now we're just grinding away at material we want to get close to where we need to be so that all the scratches are gone i really only have some in the middle cylinder my bottom cylinder is clean oh, my top cylinder has a few scratches in it too but i'm only at about five thousandths the other ones I went to nine in the middle, so I'm assuming we gotta get close to that in the middle of this one. And then we're gonna go ahead and measure, make sure we're within range, order up the parts that we need, and we're gonna spend some money rebuilding this motor. Then I'm also gonna show you how an old timer taught me how to do assembly oil. So really, really quick, what we're gonna do and what he taught me to do is I'm gonna buy a nice clean tub of white lithium grease, and I'm gonna buy a, a bottle of Shell Rotella, 15w40 diesel oil now why would i do that so this old timer taught me years ago back in the 90s the government had some regulations with oils and they took out a lot of the zinc and phosphorus because they thought that those chemicals were eating away at catalytic converters and cars causing more pollution so because of that new engine no problem they're designed to run that way what happened to him at his machine shop was he had camshafts going bad and he would return them to crane cams or competition cams, whoever it was that he was using. And they were saying, listen, this is not a failure of ours. We're not doing anything different. They researched together those companies and found this out because the government really didn't let anybody know. And that's when they started using break-in oil. Oh, you have to use break-in oil now. Well, what is break-in oil? It has a high level of zinc and phosphorus for the break-in period. So I mix that with that white lithium when I do my assembly, it goes on all my bearings, goes on the cylinder walls, inside the piston rings. And I also, you also want to do a break-in period, maybe one and a half to double the oil. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be full double, depends on, you know, what motor you're working with and whether it's a direct injection or carbureted motor. So those are the things we want to look out for that we're going to be doing as we look forward to how we're going to complete this engine. So stay tuned. Uh, make sure you send me an email at keith at outboarddad.com. And we look forward to seeing you out on the water, running your outboard like crazy. Have a great day.